Hello Oracle Database fans, this is Justin, and in this Oracle Database video YouTube tutorial, I am going to show you how to restore a cumulative incremental Oracle Database backup. Now, RMAN Recovery Manager, which is a utility piece of software that comes for free with the Oracle Database software, allows you to backup an Oracle Database, and it is a typical server client program for Oracle, where the client being the RMAN utility itself and the server being the Oracle Database instance and RMAN connects to the database instance which in RMAN talk is known as the target database and it reads data blocks into the, the target database's memory and it examines it and backs it up. Now the advantage to that, now that's called server managed backup and recovery. The other type of backup and recovery for Oracle is user managed backup and recovery but RMAN is server managed. Now RMAN is the only way that you can perform incremental backups of an Oracle database and basically what happens is every data block in, in your data files has a SCN number, system change number, in its header. And every time RMAN goes to back up a target Oracle database, it reads the data blocks of a data file into memory and it checks to see if the SCN of the uh, data block is greater than the SCN that it backed up in the prior incremental backup. And if it is, then it backs up that, that block. That block is eligible to be backed up by RMAN written to the backup piece. If it's not newer than the old one since the last incremental backup, it will throw the block away. It won't it won't damage your data, but it would, you know it just will take it out of memory. It won't use it anymore. Okay. And there are two types of incremental backups in Oracle and uh, that Armin can do against an Oracle database. There's a cumulative and a differential. Now this video shows you how to restore and recover a cumulative incremental backup. Okay. And we already performed the cumulative incremental backups. Okay. And to see the procedure we did to back up the database using the cumulative incremental method of uh, view my video on how to back up an Oracle database um, using the incremental uh, cumulative method. Um, this is how, we go, how we're going to restore it. Now uh, I also have two YouTube videos on how to back up an Oracle database using a differential incremental and differential by default is the by, by the way is the default incremental back backup method that Oracle uses, RMAN uses and how to restore the differential incremental backups. Okay, so let's set our Oracle SID to finance. Let's ensure we're set properly. And let's log connect to our finance database via our SQL Plus program. Do a select name from V dollar sign database to ensure we're connected to the right database which is finance. Now there is a table called days and here's the structure of the table. It has one column named day with data type variable character 2, 10. Now if we select all the columns, I mean all the rows from the days table saying select, use an SQL statement select space asterisk from days, we will see that we have six rows in our table. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, um, Friday, Saturday. Now what we did before in the cumulative how to back up an Oracle database using the incremental cumulative method video is we backed up, we did a full level zero cumulative backup on Sunday. Then we, then we went into SQL Plus, we created the days table and we inserted the Monday row into this table. Then we did a level one incremental cumulative backup. Then we came back in SQL Plus, inserted Tuesday, did a level one again, cumulative, inserted Wednesday, did a level one again, cumulative, inserted Thursday, do, did a level one cumulative, then came back and did an inserted Friday, and did another level one cumulative, and inserted Saturday, and, did, and then did another level one. Okay, so we have 14 backups. So if we were to connect, and basically I'm simulating doing an, doing an incremental cumulative backup, and then having business do its do its uh, inserts and its modifications against the database, have the business applications, Java or whatever, do their um, modifications to the database data all day, and then the next, during the ba next backup window, 24 hours later typically or whatever, it backs up again. So if we do a list backup summary with an RMAN connected to our target database finance, we will see all the backups that we did, that we did our cumulative backups. Here's two level zeros for Sunday. Here's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, oops, Friday, and Saturday. 
and we have two for each day because one backup p that decide, that that depends on how big your database is and how many data files you have okay uh, per table space or total anyway you have so you have two backup pieces per day which are files because you have um, one backup piece holds the backed up data blocks of all your data files the actual data you're backing up and another backup piece holds the backup of your control file and of your SP file okay if you're using it and if look, we're going to go if you go to if you cd to your Oracle home which is where the Oracle database software is installed which in this case is c colon slash Oracle slash app slash product slash 11 dot one dot zero slash db underscore one there's a subdirectory called database on the windows server and we're gonna look at all files that end with underscore one here are all the physical files the backup pieces um, which are our man uh, utility created so here is the full backup and as you can see it is um, it is bigger than the rest because it's level zero then on then you have this one which is um, this is the Sunday one then you have you can see the times how the how the minutes increase and to show the example and this is where all the data data blocks are level uh, full level zero so it's bigger it's the biggest file they're here then you have the net, the file underneath of it which is not as big which has the control file and SP file then on Monday you have the cumulative which is three three oh one and then you have this one, which is the control file and SP file, then two, then Tuesday, you have you have three three oh one three seventy six, and then you do your control file and SP file for that. Then Wednesday, you have three seventeen. Notice how it's getting gradually bigger. Okay, seven sixty. Okay, then you have your control file and SP file for that. Then you have your Wednesday three six oh four control file SP file. Thursday and then the Friday one okay and you'll notice here that um, the files are getting bigger compared to the day before they're cumulatively updating themselves because when you do a cumulative incremental backup it adds to it okay because a cumulative knows everything has all the changes since level zero while a differential only has the changes since the prior level incremental backup and that those are the differences Okay, so now what we're going to do is, with our backup intact, in we're going to go ahead and we are going to simulate a database failure. So we're going to log in as SQL Plus, connected to the finance database, and we're going to crash our Oracle instance. Shut down the board. So. And we're not going to, our, this database is running in archive log mode. We're not going to delete our archive log files, which are created here. So we don't have to worry about backing them up with the bat with the uh, R man command, which we didn't do because uh, we're not going to delete them. Okay, but I suggest you always do plus archive log when you're backing up your database. Okay, so now with the instance shut down, we're going to go ahead and we're going to delete all of our instance files, our database files. Bam, they're all gone. Now go back to where our Oracle home. database directory and look at the arm and back pieces which were created okay and we want to look at the last we always want to restore the most recent control file and the most recent control file here backup is this and to know that for sure we just know that for sure because this is a simple example but um, to know that for sure it's always a good idea to keep good log files and good outputs of your uh, list backup arm and commands do periodic list backup commands so you can really and put it to a file so you really can know um, so, so, so you really have an idea of what backup pieces are what okay you don't want to go searching through each backup piece to find what you need okay so we just know that um, backup piece e6e which is the latest one okay created at 819 was is and it's the smallest out of the two I'm smaller of the two, sorry, is the one to, um, well, it's, it's bigger, I'm sorry, it's bigger than this, only because cumulative only backs up what's changed, um, is what, con what, what contains our latest control file. And you always want the latest control file so it knows about all the backups you're trying to restore. So, you do a startup no mount, and we can do a no mount because our 
Oracle Home Directory is in, intact. So our SP file or P file, whatever we're using, is still there. So we can do a startup no mount, no problem. And you need to do a startup no mount because the instance needs to be up and running. Rman needs something to connect to. Remember, Rman's like SQL Plus. It's a regular server client program. And we type in the following. Restore control file from and the name of the backup piece. And we're not using the recovery catalog as you see. All right, and it created three copies of it because our P file told it that there's that um, we multiplex our control file. So that's a neat feature of RMAN. It does all three. Okay, so we go to database. Now we don't have to worry about the backup piece names because the control file also um, has the metadata of the RMAN backups. So the control file knows what backup pieces it needs to recover your database, to restore and recover your database. Sorry, so you really don't need to know and you don't really don't need to manage that at that level. And here are the three control files that we've recovered or stored. So now with a control file we should be able to mount our Oracle database. So we type in alter database mount. And that should mount no problem. Database mounted. Now we type in restore database. And this will bring back the physical, if you will, files. Okay, that's out of those backup piece files that we want to restore. Okay, so the physical data files. And what we're doing here is we're actually restoring our full backup. Okay, which took place on Sunday. And if you look at the, the, the piece name here, this is the first one we did, 809, and it's the biggest one. DIG is in the name of the file, right? See it right there, DIG. And if you look at the backup piece that the that our man is going to um is looking for, DIG, here it is. So we see that our man is picking the right file. And that's why it's so crucial to always use the uh, most recent control file because he'll know what you're trying to do. So now go ahead and type in recover database. And uh, if you remember in my how to restore and recover an Oracle database basic video using RMAN, uh, the recover database command in a non-incremental scenario, um, cumulative or differential doesn't matter, only applies the archive logs to your restore database, which is what you want it to do. But a recover database in this in a incremental scenario applies all the subsequent incrementals to the level zero. And, and, and rolls forward the archive logs if it needs to. Okay, so we did our restore database. Now we're doing our recover database. Okay, and we get our usual error message here and recovery. Now, notice the backup piece that it went after. It went after e F E five h Here it is, E5H. Now, we didn't say... We didn't, we didn't say restore up to a specific SCN or restore up to a, a specific time, point in time recovery. We just said recover database. And when you type it and when you say recover database, our man assumes that you mean that you, and by the way, recover database also assumes an SQL plus, um, assumes that you mean recover everything up to how, you know, get, get as, as much as you have. Restore up to the most current time. And look at this backup piece name. Backup piece name is E5H, and look at the name, the tag, Saturday, cumulative Saturday. And if we look at our files, we will see E5H is the next to the last file because E6E has the control file and SP file. Okay, so E, so it only needed two backup pieces. It needed the because we told it to restore up to um, Saturday, so it only needed two backup pieces in the cumulative incremental scenario. It needed Sunday DIG, which is level zero, and it needed Saturday, the day you're restoring up to, which is E5H. And we see that here. Okay, we need it. It automatically got. It automatically got DIG, and it automatically got E5H. Okay, so now we should be able to alter database, open, reset log since we recovered our database. That's the cool thing about cumulative, you only need two files. Because remember, a cumulative backup has everything 
that has changed since level zero. So because we want to restore Saturday, a cumulative incremental will have um, all the data from uh, Friday, from, from Saturday, from, from, from Saturday to the point we did the backup on Saturday, from Friday, from Thursday, from Wednesday, from Tuesday, from Monday, and we also have our Sunday. So now, with the database open after recovery, we log in via SQL Plus to validate the re restore and recovery, and we do a select asterisk from days. And bam, we have all of our data, okay, um, through the week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Even though the recovery procedure only called, or even though we only needed two files, we needed DIG, which was the Sunday full, and we also needed um, E5H, which is the Saturday cumulative incremental. We only need those two backup pieces, and we got all six rows. So all the data for the week, we got back. Okay, now if you did a differential restore, you would need Monday, and then you would need to Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then Saturday to bring it up to date. And to see that, uh, view my YouTube video on how to restore a differential backup. Okay, now our man would still do it automatically for you, and assuming those backup pieces are available, whether it's on a media management layer or on local disk like here, um, it would go fine. Okay, it would be just fine. But uh, cumulative is less effort on the recovery side. Okay, so that is how you, and if we restored our full backup without doing a recover, okay, without, assuming your archive logs were good, you would just, you wouldn't even have this table in these, and you could still open a database, and you'd still have a database, but it would be what the database looked like after the backup on Sunday, which means that this table and, and the rows in the table wouldn't exist. Okay, that's how you restore a cumulative incremental backup. Thank you.